Hi, I'm Jen Kingwell and I'm here today to have a little chat about my new book Quilt Recipes. It's a book that um, combines things that I hold dear to my heart, so my family, my um, career in stitching, my love of baking, um, and it's just a combination of all those things. I just thought I'd start with a little bit about my background. Um, I grew up in rural Victoria on a dairy farm and um, sort of in the middle of nowhere really. My mum wasn't a crafter, she did a little knitting but her loves were baking and um, gardening. And so I grew up in this house filled with amazing food and just a lot of love and a lot of comfort and that's always sort of carried through um, me till today. So my love of fabric and, and uh, scrap quilting really started from um, my mum's best friend Mavis who was a beautiful seamstress and every time we'd go and visit I would just go into her sewing room and I would gather all her little bits and pieces that she had left over and I, would, I started doing that from the earliest age that I can remember and I would make you know things for my doll's house and doll's clothes and just sort of use all those little bits and pieces to make in anything and everything. Um, my very first quilt that I ever made was made from those scraps. I did um, a grandmother's flower garden out of all the pieces and then I stitched it together with the most beautiful piece of polyester cotton that I could um, find because I had no idea what I was doing way back then but that was sort of the beginning of, um, of my stitching career I guess. I'm a nurse by trade, um, worked most of my nursing years as a midwife, very privileged and, and I never ever ever got um, tired of, of my work. I always felt like it was an absolute honour and a privilege to be included in those most intimate times of people's lives so that was a, a fantastic career and I sort of feel I'm really fortunate now that I get to work and stitch all day every day and where where this career has taken me you know I've traveled the world I've met some of the most amazing people and I'm really really grateful for that <clears throat> I guess um, I was sort of encouraged to get into the commercial quilting part of it by a friend who wanted to buy into a quilting store and so we did that together I was still nursing um, I would just sort of really play at the store more than anything uh, and then in I think it was about 2005 or 6 Sue Spargo came to Australia and saw one of my quilts that I'd made now I wasn't doing commercial patterns at this stage we I was just uh, writing a pattern and we were handing them out in store to anybody that needed a pattern to to make a quilt but Sue saw one of my quilts and really really encouraged me to do it as a commercial pattern and to actually take some of my patterns to quilt market in Houston and I think it was probably about 2011 before I actually did that it took her quite a while in her lovely gentle way to um, encourage me to do it but um, I took those patterns to quilt market and that's where I um, was asked to write my first book and to design fabric for Moda so um, it's been quite a journey I have written lots of quilting patterns over the years um, I guess most of them are hand for hand piecing because that's my love but I do do the odd machine piece thing um, my initial love was sampler style quilts I really loved that style of quilting but as time's gone on um, you know everything evolves you evolve you change what you love you start exploring different things so I'm having a love affair at the moment of um, one block wonder quilts which I really really am enjoying so my vision for quilt recipes was really um, as I said that sort of combination of the two things I love but I really wanted to showcase a traditional quilt in a, a modern home decor setting. I feel that a lot of um, people think of traditional quilts and don't think of them in the modern um, aesthetic. A lot of stylists I think would never consider using 
um, a traditionally pieced quilt in, in a, a photo shoot for a beautiful modern home. So I had this idea that I really wanted to showcase that. And as I said before, I really wanted to honour the baking part of it and be um, true to my mum's vision with that, in that everything she made was homely and delicious, but nothing was ever difficult or took a lot of time. So all the recipes in the book, there are eight different recipes in the book, and they all are one that probably is my favourite thing in the book, which are the powder puffs. Take a, They take a little bit of time. They're not hard, but they do take a little bit of time. But everything else is absolutely quick to whip up and they're things that I make still to this day all the time for my family. And the quilts that I um, chose to make to put into the book, uh, none of that, those, even though they're mo mostly hand-pieced, they're not difficult quilts to make. So I sort of wanted to make it achievable but make it really um, a, a beautiful book and I am so proud of it because I, I was thinking if we've got all these beautiful quilts showcasing beautiful homes and things I wanted the book itself to be absolutely beautiful and it is. It's hardcover, it's got a beautiful soft touch to it, the photography in it is amazing. Um, I'm really proud of the way that it's that it's turned out. I chose to go down the self-publishing road with this one because I had such a strong vision for what I wanted it to be and Flip, the artistic director of the book, did an amazing job to um, really get the look and feel that I had in my mind. In fact, it's turned out even better than I ever thought it possibly could. Um, but we really wanted, like we chose a couple of different venues. One, one of the homes we chose to shoot in is very... Um, I'd call it sort of modern farmhouse. I get lot, lots of timber, lots of concrete, but really with a very modern sort of feel to it. And the other home is a little bit more classic, but still a really modern classic home. And it was lovely to shoot in the two different locations and just be able to get that different sort of look in both. It was also fantastic that I was so involved being at the photo shoots and being able to be part of all of that. And also our printer um, is a local printer. They're environmentally conscious and they were amazing and amazingly patient. <clears throat> and we, you know, we got to be there and colour check every page that came off the printing press and they were so hands-on and involved with us, helping us all along the way with the different steps because it was the first time that any of us had self, like, published a book. So it was, um, that was really helpful to have them on, on board. So I'm really, really happy with how the book has turned out. It's beyond my wildest dreams that it's turned out so good. So I'm really, really happy with that and very, very proud of it. So um, the projects in the book, I think the cover shot is a quilt that we named Wensleydale, which was one of the um, uh, the areas that we shot the, the book in. Um, it is a one block quilt, but I just love the scrappy nature of it. It's a rectangular block and it's just, I've got florals and checks and just all sorts of fabrics in there, but I really love the way it's come together. It's quite a a moody quilt, lots of blues and tans and, and dark reds. It's just a, to me, as soon as I made it, I thought, I think this is the, the quilt that's going to be the, the cover quilt. But that was closely followed by a quilt that I made in here called Diamond Exchange. It's a very different feel. It's sort of like a brighter um, palette, but those two were vying for um, the cover shot and um, Right up until the last minute, I was still undecided a little bit about which one. I polled the audience and everybody, you know, friends and family and everybody picked a different one. So that was, um, <clears throat> I just had to make a decision. And I'm really happy with with what with choosing Wensleydale. Um, I tried to make the, even though they're all relatively simple and most of them are single block quilts, I tried to sort of make them all a little bit different so that there's hopefully something in there for everybody. Um, there are a couple of machine pieced, you know, totally rotary cut machine pieced projects. There are some that lend themselves to hand piecing with inset seams and what have you, like point addis. That was a fun one um, 
that I chose to sort of do a bit of an ombre colour palette on that one. So that was also fun gathering the fabrics for that and just making sure that it's probably the quilt that took me the longest to make, not in actual stitching time, but waiting for to find the right fabric just to lead one block to the next. So that was fun. Um, some smaller projects in there, some cushions that of course you can make any size you like. Um, and then the baking, that was also fun. It was almost hard to narrow down which recipes of, of mums were the most family, um, the, the favourites of, of most people in the family. I think the chocolate cake probably is my family's favourite, um, or the ginger biscuits, it's hard to tell. They, they love them all. But the thing that I get requested the most to make are the powder puffs, um, <clears throat> but they tend to be for more sort of special um, events. So I think the nostalgia of mum, I'm really, you know, I'm very happy that we've been able to represent the sort of my life in a book, really. My love of, as I said, family, home, um, comfort, all those things that quilting and baking sort of represent to me. So that's a little bit about me and, and the book. Um, I hope you will find something in there, whether it be a cake that becomes a family favourite or a biscuit that becomes a family favourite or a quilt that you make for a loved one, but hopefully there'll be something in there for you to enjoy.